Okay, 4.2. So it says, on arrival in Springbok, the runners must first pick up Joe, a fellow um, runner, before heading to the park run. Okay. And they've given us this label B, but let's just see what's going on. It says, Annex to she shows a street map indicating the route from entering Springbok A to the park run B. Okay. So, okay. So they said we entering Springbok. So they enter Springbok here. And this is where the park run is over here. Right? A and B. And where do they have to pick up their friend? Must first pick up Joe Fellow member before. Oh, so they just have to pick him up. Right? Doesn't say where he is. But they're going from A to B. Okay. So let's just see what they want from us. It says, use Annex C to answer the questions that follow. Perfect. It says, name the road by which they will enter Springbok. So from what I'm seeing, it'll be Four Tracker Road. Okay? Because that's the main road that they'll enter on. So let's just write that down. Let me make sure that you can see what I'm seeing. For Make sure you spell it correctly. I am honestly a terrible speller. Okay. Okay, so that was just sort of an introductory question. Now, it says, Joe gives them the following directions to his home. Into Springbok from Uppington. Okay, that's what they've done, where they are at A. Turn right into Eitzbun Street. Okay, then it says, turn left into... Lukhoff Street, okay? Then it says, turn left into the first street. Okay, use the directions above to determine in which street Joe lives. Okay, so we have to, let's use a, a nice little color. So they go here. Then it says eight spun, right? Eight spun was the first one. It says, turn right into eight spun. So if they're driving this way, right would be onto eight spun. It would be this way. Okay, then it says, turn left into Luxorf, okay? So if they're here, left would be over here, okay? And then it says, turn left into the first street. So if they're here, the first street would be Rafir Street. I think that's correct, let's just check. I think it would be Rafir Street, yes. Okie dokes. Do you see that? So what they are testing here is whether you can take words and interpret it on a map, right? So let's just spell that. Let's say Rafir Street. Okay. Those questions can sometimes be quite difficult. I'm also sh shocking with directions. So sometimes I like can't even read what's going on on a map. So that's quite a good question to practice. Let's go on to the next one. Name the lodge near the park run. Now, okay. Um, oh, look, there's a bug there. Oh, sorry, fam. Not living your best life. Okay. There's B, where the, the park run is, and it says that this is a little lodge, and it's Deb's Lodge. Okay, Deb's Lodge. Okay, that's quite an easy question, because it's actually the only lodge that is kind of in this picture at all. So you couldn't really get it too wrong, right? Deb's Lodge. Okay, let's now go on to our next question. Sorry for all the bugs. Goodness gracious me. Okay, now, 2.2, I mean, 4.2.4. The distance from Joe's house to the park run is 2.34 kilometers. They travel at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Determine how long it will take them in minutes to get from Joe's house to the park run. Okay, and we can use this little formula, right? It's always nice to know we have a formula. So let's just write that down, right? So we want the time and that equals distance over speed. Okay, and we know that the distance they give that to us is 2.34 kilometers. Okay, and our speed is 40 kilometers. So we're going to say 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, so let's just put that into our calculator, except this, is, this answer is going to be in hours, right? Because you see, it's hours down there. So let's say 2.34 divided by 40. Okay, so it's going to be zero. 0.0585 hours. But they didn't ask us for the answer in hours, did they? Let's look what they asked. They said in minutes. Not a problem. All we have to do is we say, well, there's 60 minutes, right? Let me check. You can see what I'm writing. In one hour, right? So you now you just say the 0 0.0585 times by 60, okay? And that is 3 point five one minutes 
Okay, so it's important here with these couple of questions that we've just done now, like there's a lot of conversions. So it's important to know your uh, millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers, but also your seconds, minutes, and um, hours. Okay, so that's that answer to that one. Let's now go on to our last question for this question. So it says 29 of the 42 athletes who participated in the park run were female. Okay, determine the probability of randomly selecting a male athlete from the group. Okay, so if there's 42 athletes and we know that 29 are female, right? We know that 42 minus 29 are male, right? By definition, okay? Because you can either be male or female. So we know that there are 13 males. 13 males, 29 females, okay? And now it says... Determine the probability of randomly selecting a male athlete from the group. So we know that probability is always what we want, right? What we want, the event that we want, over all possible events, all possibilities. So now we know what we want is one of these 13 oaks, right? We want one of these 13 guys. So there's 13 ways that we can get what we want, right? But there's 42 possible things that could happen if we just pick someone from this group, right? There's 42 people we can pick, right? And those are my possible events. But I only want to pick one of the 13 guys. Okay, so that is my probability, right? So you can just say 13 divided by 42, which is 0 0.31, one. Okay, you can keep it as a fraction if you want. They didn't say you had to put it in a decimal or anything like that. I'm writing it like that because I want you to remember that probability always has to be between 0 and 1. And we see that this is between 0 and 1. So we're comfortable that it is possible. Okay, I hope that was helpful. We only have question 5 left and then we're done with this paper. But these are really good questions just to go over. Okay, hope this is helpful. Cheers, guys.